Hello guys, Howie here. Now, regretfully, this week I do not have access to my camera. You will not be able to see my beautiful face, and I apologize for that. You're just going to have to deal with it. Now, moving on, let's talk about the digital age. Never before has it been easier to access the content we want when we want it. At the touch of a few buttons and the quick flash of a bank card, we can pretty much get whatever we want. We live, at least in the context of the great video game timeline, pretty much in the future. Everything is so easy, it truly is a very exciting time. So why am I not excited? I, like many others, have bought a number of games from my PlayStation 4 digitally. Personally, I really prefer to have a physical copy when I have the option, and I know many people feel the same way, but if a digital version is more convenient, exclusive, or optimal for my personal gaming needs, I will indulge in a cheeky download, as long as the price is right. The problem is, most of the time, the price isn't right. In what universe is it acceptable to charge a hundred frickin' dollars for a digital game? Especially when physical copies are on sale almost everywhere, except for EB Games, for up to $30 cheaper. I recently took a brief waltz to my local JB Hi-Fi with the intention of buying Dying Light for PS4. Admittedly, I hadn't done my research and of course discovered to my dismay that physical copies of the game had been delayed, not to be sold for another month or so, fair enough, whatever. No probs, right? Just download the game on PSN. Except that it's a hundred bucks, and piss on that. It would at least be acceptable in some sense if that price included all of the DLC that's going to be released, like the game with the season pass for a hundred dollars. Personally, I really hate the idea of season passes, I don't normally indulge in them, but at least it would alleviate the brutal costs probably a bit. I don't personally believe that any game is worth a hundred dollars, especially in a world where many games are essentially glorified platforms for supporting DLC. A hundred dollars is a lot of money. Some people sell themselves the fallacy that it's just a hundred bucks, and considering your own circumstances it might not seem like much. But when I do the math, I would have to work, in my current working space, just over four hours for those hundred big ones. Now that I'm spending that on one game, it doesn't look good. When I think about it from that perspective, it's a terrible deal, and that's a lot of moolah. It's a lot of money for a retail copy, but I believe it's even more heinous when it comes to the digitals. With a game bought physically from a retailer, there are a number of costs for the developer. You have the production, writing and printings of the discs themselves, the manufacture of packaging, as well as the considerable logistical effort of distribution to shopping outlets all over the world. How many of these costs also apply to digital products that only exist as a collection of ones and zeros? Not a single one! The production, in quotations, of a single digital item is considerably cheaper than a physical, concrete, real one that actually has to be made. Therefore, it's absolutely reasonable to assume, nay, to expect, that immaterial products be cheaper than their retail counterparts. Furthermore, the PlayStation Network continues its shitwheel behaviour by constantly needing to check licences to make sure we're good for it, meaning that in order to play games bought digitally, like many of the ones that I own myself, you need an active internet connection just so that old mate knows you're not a dirty thief somehow. You lose your internet connection? Sorry mate, no games. Something even completely out of your hands like the PlayStation Network going down for maintenance? No games for you! Sony cops a fat DDoS attack to its nubile face like it did at Christmas time? Oh, we're sorry. You can't connect to the internet for literally any other reason? No games for you. Now obviously this is pretty gross, this is bullshit online DRM, and is only just not as bad as Microsoft's original plans for the Xbox One. I don't like being treated like a thief on a service that I've paid actual money for. I want to be able to play the games that I legally own, because they belong to me, whether they're digital or exist on a physical disc whenever I damn well please. I don't like having to check in every time I turn my console on, just so that I can use a service that I've already paid for in full. It's like buying a new car, but every time you start it you have to take the paperwork into the dealer to prove that you actually own the thing, and that you're not a dishonest pile of shit, otherwise the car won't start. You wouldn't be happy with that, would you? This attitude of, oh hey there player, we appreciate your custom and hope to deliver the highest level of service that we can. This one's for the players. Blah, where'd you get that game? It's two-faced, and also a sticky load of wank, made all the more abhorrent when you might be playing 25% more for a digital copy. Sort it out. Bye.